This video is going to speak about reprogramming yourself, how you can reprogram your mind for success. If you just want beginner or basic stuff, this video is not for you. However, if you want some real, practical, specific manifesting tips, stick around to the end. This will be super practical and powerful. Welcome back. Today we're going to discuss how we can reprogram our minds. All of us have been programmed by society, by our families, by our environment. And it is our state of consciousness that determines our reality and our results. Our brain, our mind, which is on a, in simple terms, divided with this conscious, what we are aware of, and the subconscious, what we are unaware of, that controls 95% or more of what we actually think, believe, and do in our lives. I'm going to cover three specific areas, and then I'm going to be sharing some exercises with you that if you practice them, you will see results in your life. The three areas I'm going to cover are the need to self-examine. And secondly, I'll discuss our self-concept, our self-image of ourself, and the important part that plays. And also, habits how important our habits are because we create our habits and our habits create us. Have you ever felt that you're like a hamster on a wheel? Someone who's working hard but not achieving your goals? Feeling you're stuck and not making the progress you desire? If that's you, whether you feel completely this way or at times feel trapped and feel you're not accomplishing your goals, you're in the right place. Perhaps you're familiar with the saying that is so true, that if you always do what you've always done, you'll always have what you've always had. Yes, the same old thinking produces the same old results again and again, like a never-ending circle. In order to change our results, we need to reprogram ourselves for success. We need to insert <laughs> new software. We need to affect the hard drive with information and ideas that will put us on a path to success because we know that our brain is literally filled with synaptic connections and these connections are hardwired from thinking and being influenced the same way over and over again. In the same way, we can self-program. That's what this video is about to give you some inspiration and some ideas and some practical exercises coming later in the video that you can actually apply in your life. But I want you to understand that the brain is programmed and can be reprogrammed if you so choose. As we understand from science, the synaptic connections either grow stronger through repetition and belief, or they fade and can be replaced with new ideas and connections, but those pathways must be developed. When reading Sham Helmstetter's book on neuroplasticity, he wonderfully illustrates how we can create those new connections, and I love the way that he illustrates it. He illustrates it as creating a pathway. So, as you see on your screen, the pathway, notice 
there's a pathway that's either been developed or is being developed by repeatedly walking over that path. It even looks as though this pathway could easily be run over again by the forest and dissolve, or it can be reinforced. Our goal is to reinforce those new ideas and beliefs as real in our lives. And just like a pathway, when you walk through the forest, for example, the first time you walk through from one spot to another, maybe crossing through to reach a beautiful meadow or river or waterfall, discovering it perhaps for the first time, there is no pathway. But if you repeatedly walk across that same section of the forest, you'll gradually press down the the grass and knock away the bushes and gradually create a path. And then that pathway eventually becomes a paved road, so to speak. And eventually, like a highway from one thought to another, connecting your beliefs and reprogramming yourself. Self-examining Developing a new self-concept and creating great habits is a wonderful and powerful way to accomplish this. So whether it's for your personal life and your relationships, whether it's for your physical health, perhaps it's for your finances, your business and or your job, perhaps in the area of your spiritual life, all of these can be developed through using the tools that I'm going to share. So first, how do we self-examine? Start by asking questions. Ask yourself probing questions about your current beliefs. And as you do, be honest with yourself, yet non-judgmental. In other words, you just want to really examine your results your thinking, and your beliefs that have led you to where you are now. For example, with finances, what are your beliefs around money? Do you feel that money comes to you easily, or do you struggle? Are your finances a problem in your life? Perhaps you didn't grow up in a family that had money. You may have a very negative belief on a deeper level about having enough money, certainly about ever having the abundance and wealth you desire. Be honest about that and ask yourself, what is your thinking when someone mentions money? What is your emotional response to that? How do you actually feel about your ability to achieve the financial situation that you desire? Another example could be relationships. Am I the type of partner I desire to be? How's my relationship with my children if I have such? How do I relate to people in general? Am I someone who is easy to get along with? Am I difficult to get along with? Do I perceive that they're all against me, that they don't understand me? that I just can't get along. Those are only examples of questions you could have. I want you to design your own questions about each area of your life. I encourage you to actually take a notebook and at the top of the page, put the subject, be it relationships, be it your finances, be it your health or another area of your life, and write out the question and give the honest answer and see where there could definitely be room for improvement. In other words, whatever the negative situation is, what would the opposite of that look like? So in looking at where your limitations are, look at where you would like to be to be the person that has and lives the life that they wish to live. The idea is that you need to know thyself before you can seek to change thyself. 
And so be honest and just let your pen flow. This may take even several days, but keep at it and do this daily until you really see yourself for what you truly are. Now, I'm going to get to some exercises shortly that will actually help you rewire your brain, rewire your thinking, and change your self-concept and your habits. But first, let's take a look at those two. First, your self-concept. What is the self-concept? I love how Neville Goddard words it in the book, The Power of Awareness, in chapters 3, 4, and 5. He says that your self-concept is all that you believe and consent to and accept as true for you. It's your attitude toward yourself and others. Aha! Now, if you've followed the first step of self-examination, now you understand what you believe and consent to and accept as true for you. Such as, uh, for example, I'm weak. I'm insecure. I'm not loved. Or, is your self-concept, I'm strong. I'm secure. And I'm loved. In other words, you've examined yourself honestly, non-judgmentally, and now you know where your weaknesses and limitations are. And now you want to see how you can change and become the opposite and change that self-concept of what you believe, consent to, and accept, and your attitude to become the person that you wish to be, that will have the things and achieve the goals that you seek to achieve. Understand, you don't get what you want. You must be it to achieve it. And that leads us to the third aspect, which is habits, creating great habits. And these must be ingrained on a subconscious level in order to become a permanent part of our being, the way we are. To transform ourselves, we have to transform our thinking. And that's where the work comes in. Yes, I said work, and it's not a dirty word, because this should be a process you're rewarding yourself for by transforming yourself to be the person you wish to be. And so you have to transform your thinking. You have to change your mind and develop those synaptic connections with those new pathways that we discussed earlier in becoming the person that you wish to be. Now, I hope this is all coming together for you. Although this is deep, I've done my best to simplify it so that you can now understand that you're setting yourself up for believing that you need to use the exercises that I'm going to give you because it is only through the development of yourselves by transforming your thinking, developing a new concept of yourself. And that requires a program, a new program. And I'm going to give you some ideas now. I'm going to give you the practical exercises. So stay with me because this is the important part. If you're with me so far and you're in agreement, now we can begin to reprogram by consistently and persistently creating those new habits that will develop our life. Now, I'm only going to give you a few, and there's many more to be found on my channel, but let's start with some very basic ideas that you can begin to do right now. Feed your brain. The most successful people in the world are well known for their consumption of the right food for their brain through reading. Examples are Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, and the list goes on and on of those who have testified. You can research any of them. A large part of their success 
has everything to do with reading great information that will change their thinking and change their brains and their minds to become the person that they became. Now, before you slight this suggestion, keep in mind that you're always programming yourself. When you watch television, when you listen to the radio, when you check your media, when you watch YouTube videos, all day long we're actually feeding our brain, but are we feeding it with healthy food? Now, you should be feeding your mind with healthy material all the time. And one of the best ways is, yes, good old-fashioned reading. And I'm going to share with you a few books that have really helped me, especially over the last few years. I highly recommend this book. It's entitled, The Last Law of Attraction Book You'll Ever Need to Read. Now, it's amazing because it's just full of exercises and processes that you can practice that actually work. They actually affect your success. So definitely purchase or look for this book online. It is absolutely amazing. Another that I highly recommend is by the other author that I read, and I read this and the others during COVID, and they actually moved me and changed my life so that I was actually able to move to my beach life that I'm currently experiencing in the Philippines. Feeling is a secret goes deeply into the subject of the subconscious mind and how to develop and change your subconscious mind. The power of awareness is fundamental to Neville Goddard's teachings. Highly recommend this book. I've read it hundreds of times and I continue to read it on a regular basis. One of the best ways to feed your mind with Neville Goddard's teachings is the Neville Goddard Collection, which has the books I just named, that is, The Feeling is a Secret and The Power of Awareness, and all ten of Neville's primary books that teach you how to become conscious and aware of your desire and manifest your desires. And he goes into detail on the processes of changing your mind. Another is very simple but extremely powerful. We've heard about scripting. This is very similar because basically you want to write out your success story as already accomplished in the first person present tense. So from the earlier uh, discussion about uh, really examining yourself and finding out your limiting thinking and weaknesses and then really perceiving what would be the opposite of those limits. They would be, of course, having abundance, having wealth, having the partner that you desire, being the father, the mother, the person that you would like to be and having those qualities. Write out your complete story as if it's already happened and you already are that person. Now the next step is to write out a scene that implies that you already have your wish fulfilled. Click the link that I'm going to leave you now and or you can click it and come back to it. It's the scene of your imaginal act. In other words, this is the end scene, the very conclusion of what it would be like, what it would feel like, and what would happen were you to accomplish your goals. For example, you've already got that amazing job. You've manifested that tremendous job with that great income. And now perhaps you're either with the director who's congratulating you or you're out with friends at dinner perhaps and they're telling you how marvelous it is that you've got this amazing position now and how amazing your life is. And they're patting you on the back or they're shaking your hand. It's a short scene, but you want to be able to visualize that. See the link for visualization. I'll leave that for you now. You visualize it as already yours, that you are living from it. Click the link, follow the directions 
in that visualization video along with the scene of implication video that I just left you, and those will help you put it together, this end scene that implies that your wish and your desire is already fulfilled. Now we also know that what we take through our hearing, through listening, also feeds our mind and our thinking. And so I encourage you to use audibles. You can actually go online and listen to Neville Goddard's lectures. You can also find meditations, such as the meditations of Joe Dispenza, which I highly recommend you use. You can use uh, a lot of those audios during the day. You can use the meditation tapes at night. And it's very effective, of course, if you do this also just before you sleep, because the last thing that you feed your mind and think about and listen to and or watch, right, before you sleep is extremely important. So you're replacing watching mindless TV as you fall asleep leaving the television set on, or listening to music, which is not a bad idea, but to feed your mind, listening to audibles with great information. You can download and listen to books, most of them for free on YouTube even, and you can use your headphones and actually fall asleep listening to that training, which is in effect going to reprogram you. So I highly recommend that you choose carefully the audibles. There's many that are marvelous for feeding your mind. Again, Joe Dispenza is excellent. Neville Goddard, superb. And there's many, many others. Listening to audibles through headphones is better or earbuds because it blocks out the sounds of whatever else is in your environment in your home and it also helps you concentrate and it feeds your mind more directly by listening to audibles. And this is a habit that will absolutely change your life. Again, you're replacing the garbage you could be listening to that might be entertainment but isn't going to benefit you in the long term. You want to feed yourself with these marvelous ideas and trainings. You can listen even to audibles to those books I mentioned and other amazing books and then actually practice what is given. Simply put, by feeding your mind with the right things, you can develop your mind. You can create those synaptic connections to what you want to be and over time, through repetition, consistency and persistency, you will be able to manifest your goals. If you found value today, click my playlist at the end of this video for much, much more.